Hello and welcome to this video on trace settings for an FDM printer within GrabCAD Print. My name is Robert French and I'm an Applications Engineer with Go Engineer. So when we talk about trace settings, we're talking about settings that are matched to our machine, hopefully replicating the settings that we have on our machine. Now on my screen now, you can currently see I'm linked to, via an IP network, my F370 machine. I can see that down in the bottom right corner where it says SD, that's San Diego, the office I'm out of, F370. And this is further confirmed that we see in the tray settings window on the right, I have all these green links indicating that I'm actually pulling these settings from my machine. Now in the next image, we see that those green links disappear because I'm simply using a F370 template. Now, I just have to make sure if I'm not connected via IP that I match these settings to what I actually have on my machine. If I create this build job and take it over to the printer with a USB stick, for instance, if these settings don't match what's actually on the machine, I'm going to have an error on the machine and be unable to print. The next step here is importing your 3D file. Now, you can see in the drop-down menu that GrabCAD Print takes a whole wide range of file formats and I'd recommend sticking to your native CAD file format, but for example's sake, we're going to import an STL. When we import an STL, because it's unitless, we can use this option on the right-hand side to choose what units are appropriate. Now, I happen to save this out as a millimeter part, therefore identifying it as millimeter over here is correct. If I were to switch to a different unit here, I'd see the part swell to a size way too big for my tray and not actually accurate to what I'm trying to print. Now let's go through the options inside of the tray settings window. At the very top we have model material, and I know because of my green link that I have ABS carbon fiber 10 loaded, but I see all the other materials that are potentially available to me. But they have an orange link next to them because they are not currently loaded into my machine. Just beneath our model material, we have our slice heights. Now, depending on what material we choose, we're going to have access to different slice heights. The F123 series is capable of printing 5 thou, 7 thou, 10 thou, and 13 thou slice heights. But once again, these are material dependent. Not every slice height is going to be available for every material. Just beneath this, we have slice style. We have constant or adaptive. Now I won't get too into it as a colleague of mine recently created a video on this topic and he goes very in depth, but basically are we going to have the same slice height every time on every layer or do we want to give the machine some adaptive capabilities where it can vary the slice height in different areas to give us better res resolution, better accuracy, and an overall better print. The next two boxes are support material and support tip. Now, not every model material uses the same support material. For instance, a specialty material like Duran is going to have its own unique support material, and PLA uses its own model material as support. So as we update these different boxes, whether it be model material or slice height, the software will automatically update some of the other boxes here to accommodate for our print, as we can see in this next image. For instance, when we change to ASA, it's going to change our infill style and other parameters as it sees fit. Down below in our advanced options, the first parameter we can set is part build style. It's either normal or draft. Normal will give us a normal support structure made entirely of support material, whereas draft will actually incorporate some of the model material. This can make for quicker print times because there's less swapping between the material and support head and support material removal can actually be quicker because we have less contact between support and model. Beneath that we have purge part type. This is the bow tie looking shape that we see kind of in the back right of our build tray. Now the purpose for this is to every so often or every layer kind of purge the nozzles. This keeps them clean and keeps our print quality up. Now do we want to do this every layer all the way to the full height of the part, or is it only necessary to do until the last support material layer? I'm of the camp that likes to do full height. We're not wasting a lot of material here, 
And if it gives us full quality all the way to the very top of the part, I'm all in favor of that. The next option we have is system mode. This is something we'll use when we have special geometry. And that special geometry would be either a thin wall where we have a feature on our part that is 90 thou or 2.3 millimeters or thinner, or a brick, a very large, bulky, taking up a majority of our build tray kind of geometry. Now, this isn't changing layer height or any kind of other aspect about your print or any, any setting we've defined previously, but rather fine-tuning the build chamber on our 3D printer, such as altering the temperature to ensure that the quality of the print stays as good as possible. The last option we have inside of tray settings is first layer material. This is an option, like many other options, that only shows up under certain conditions, and that is when our layer height or slice height is set to 5 thou. Now when it's set this small, the software recommends, Stratasys recommends, that we use model material as the very first layer of our part. This better adheres the overall print to our build tray, keeps everything more stable, and gives us a higher quality print at the end of the day. That's it for tray settings. My name was Robert French, and thank you very much for watching.